You think it's fair to say that you're a better bass player than Tommy Stinson? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I kind of did the Cliff Notes version of a lot of his bass fills, and, you know, I did enough to, you know, get it, get it done, but he... he He's way more uh, intuitive with fill, like little fills and runs. You know, I don't know how to read notes. I don't. He, I don't think he knows how to read notes either. But scales. You know, I, I played it a little more on the safe side. You know, I'd rather just not hit a brown note than uh, right. try to do something fancy. I kept it a little more simplified, just out of necessity because we didn't practice a ton. You know, we usually get, get together at his house the day before a tour. And kind of do half of all the songs. <laughs> and then, you know, so there wasn't a lot of, I had to play a little safer. Um, especially like with Tommy, some of the older songs that he would do, he would misremember parts a little bit. Like I remember there was a bridge for a song or two where he didn't quite, I had to anticipate if he was going to play it the right way or his new way. <laughs> yeah, kind of on the, you know, I had to like have one ear on what I'm doing and one ear on what's, you know, because like lead guitar, you can get away with, um, noodling a little more if it's in the right key and drums are drums but like with bass you kind of got to be playing the right part as the, the main guy you got to follow, follow stick close to that so definitely not a better bass player but I'm honored that he didn't ever tell me what to do or that I was doing it wrong or or kick me out you did uh, Stephen Colbert with Bash and Pop, how was that experience? Was that at the Ed Sullivan Theater? It was. So um, being a Beatles fan, that had to be kind yeah, of a cool yeah, experience. A very cool experience. I don't think I was aware of this. A little weird because it's like, especially with someone of Tommy's, uh, you know, he's not, um, you know, it's not like you're the Beatles. Um, you know, I'd say a, a fraction of the audience was aware of who he was. It's not like a Bash and Pop or Tommy concert where, 80 to 90 percent of the people are there to see you. it was more like opposite and we did obviously do a sound check but you kind of come out cold and it's not live so if you really screwed up you could start over but it's not ideal or encouraged to start over um, on a song so you, you're kind of coming out cold you don't really ever warm up and uh it's kind of like playing in a shopping mall because it's kind of like this the lights are bright it's very unnatural um but I understand why they do it because they have to make it look good on TV. Did but they pay for travel? I think, well, we were already on tour. So, um, yeah, we were just already out there. I mean, I did get a check, performance check from it once. It wasn't very much, but, you know, you had to sign paperwork and do taxes and stuff. Yeah. Um, do you snoop around the theater at all? Not too much. Um, I've mentioned this on social media. It was very odd because it was like, what was it? It was, yeah, there was some political stuff going on at the time. I'll just say that. And uh, so it was kind of a weird, f ominous feeling in the air. And you're just in the basement and you can see TV screens of what's happening, you know, the actual show. But it was kind of weird because we played a song that on the album it fades out. And Tommy's manager had, we were like, how do we end this on a TV? You know, we don't want to go on and on on live TV. There's only so much time. So Tommy's manager at the time had the idea of Colbert to come out and start unplugging the instruments. Because um, the song just goes on and on, the same two chords. So he did that. Um, but what wasn't planned was uh, Tommy and Stephen Colbert ended up getting in a wrestling match, which was real. I mean, they weren't mad at each other, but it wasn't planned. It just was like... We knew he was going to come out and unplug the stuff, but somehow they ended up doing a little bit of a wrestling match. And you fate. can see you in the, the video. You're standing yeah. right to the side of them. I mean, <laughs> I was surprised. I mean, I knew he was going to come out um, and, and stuff like that, but we didn't know it was going to turn into wrestling, but it was kind of fun. It was towards the end of a tour, so we were a little bit tired. And um, yeah, um, what was I trying to say? Oh, yeah, but, but that, my whole point was you. You do have the opportunity to do a second take, but after the wrestling thing, no one, I don't think anyone was feeling a second take, so that was that. That was it. I don't think it was the best performance, but we weren't going to we weren't going to reassemble after wrestling and reset and try another one. So that that kind of decided that that was a one take and and out.